Back in July of 2024, PCSX2 was massively overhauled, which elevated the emulator to new heights. There were advancements to its UI and we were introduced to retro achievements for the first time. But importantly, all of the accumulated compatibility fixes from nightly builds were ported to its latest public release. It was quite an achievement at the time, and I was hugely impressed. And as of November this year, 99.5% of all games are either playable or perfect on the emulator. But as we all know by now, playable can mean many different things. So, have these games now been fixed in 2025? Let's find out. I'll start with a quick correction. In my previous video, I assumed that Driver 3 was fixed because it no longer had graphical bugs, but unfortunately, it still has major AI issues. Already in the second mission, this car I was following would drive into obstacles, making it impossible to progress. Apparently, the amount of compute power required to emulate proper AI would be astronomically high. So this game won't be playable for a while. Beyond Good and Evil has been improved to some extent, although there are still several graphical anomalies. And these include broken shadows and strange discoloration when traveling on water with the hoverboat. Colin McRae Rally has the same problem as Beyond Good and Evil, showing strange colors in hardware mode. I should mention that it is fine in software mode, but then you're running at native resolution and nobody wants to play like that. Last time I played Manhunt 2 on PC SX2, it still had trouble rendering shadows, but now things are looking pretty flawless. The PC version has problems of its own, so this is arguably the best way to play the game. One of the most sought after racing games on PS2 was Ridge Racer 5. And unfortunately, it still has minor graphical bugs as you can see here on the rear bumper. It looks like a sort of dithering effect and that's clearly not right. Splashdown has the same problem as last time I played, with water not rendering in hardware mode or software mode. I also couldn't get races to start for some reason. Oh well, that's life I suppose. The Godfather can be played on many different platforms, so the fact that lights are visible through walls is not a train smash. Still, it would be nice if the developers could fix the issue. The dashboard cam in Toka 2 has minor texture issues. And yes, I did apply manual hardware fixes, but it didn't resolve anything. That's not the only problem though. I also noticed broken textures on metallic surfaces. And both of these issues were replicated in Toka 3. Having said that, the PC versions are still decent. They can't be bought anymore, but you can still find them with a bit of perseverance. Tourist Trophy is still exclusive to PS2 and highly coveted by PC gamers. For a while, you could run the PAL version with some workarounds, but now it seems the NTSC version is also playable. I'm hesitant to say it's fully playable because license tests might still require manual fixes, but at least now you can play it. When I last played True Crime, New York City over a year ago, it had severe performance issues coupled with very bad visual bugs. I've been testing it for about two hours and feel like it's playable, but not quite perfect yet. I noticed some flickering textures here and there. Rain seems to still have problems, so I'm guessing the game is 90% to becoming perfect. And the PC version sucks, so it's important that this version becomes fully playable. I've now covered all of the games from my 2024 video, but after combing through the comments, I felt compelled to do more testing. So in this comment, I was informed of Stuntman's bad AI. That makes sense, since Driver 3 was made by the same developer and built on the same engine. What struck me most about this game, however, was its disappointing performance. Even in software mode, the frame rate was unstable, so it's not playable for me. This commenter brought up several games, including Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance and its sequel, plus Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. All of these ran on the same engine, and the only problems I found were very slight misalignments with typefaces and UI elements. You can hardly see it, though. And as for the Punisher, it looked absolutely perfect when upscaled. I was having a lot of fun, too. This commenter bemoaned Ultimate Spider-Man's uneven performance, but bear in mind, this was well over a year ago. And after playing it for over an hour, I had no frame drops at all. 
This commenter complained that Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 had vertical lines at every resolution. That must have been fixed because I can't see it. Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects is a complete disaster on the emulator. Nothing I tried managed to fix it, although I should mention that it's fully playable on the Xbox emulator. Until this person brought it up, I had never even heard of Stolen. But here it is, warts and all. And as you can see, it still has unresolved lighting issues. Everblue and its sequel refused to load after the initial splash screens, so consider them fully broken on the emulator. One commenter said that Onimusha 3 Demon Siege had visual bugs when upscaled. Apparently this happened because of an update, but as you can see it works flawlessly now. In case you're wondering, all games are running at 1440p resolution. The Yakuza games used to be plagued with severe ghosting issues on the emulator. This was already somewhat improved in 2024, but now the ghosting seems to be completely gone. This commenter mentioned several games, but one that stood out for me was Shox. It's an arcade racer that's surprisingly fun. It has a major issue with distant textures that appear to be flickering, and this could be related to broken MIP maps. Just to prove that I read all comments, Fire Warrior has been fixed. And it's a good thing too, since the PC version was gimped by the developers. It looks terrible in comparison to the PS2 version. It's not the best shooter ever, but it will keep you entertained. But okay, we've come to the end of my video. If you found it useful, please remember to give a like. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.